Hi yogis, I'm Nicole. Welcome to my yoga time. Today is your yin practice and I'll be using a bolster and two blocks. So today's class is just sharing with you some of my favorite postures to do with a bolster. But if you do want to practice this class and you don't have a bolster, you can always use a rolled up towel or a pillow as well. So when you're ready, lay your bolster, if you've got one, across parallel to the short side of the mat. Some of you might like to use a block here as well to support the head. Some might be fine without the block. So coming down on your right side, lay your right shoulder on the mat. And if you need the block underneath the head, it's there for support. Otherwise, you can bring your head all the way down to the mat. Now, if there's no discomfort with this left shoulder, take the arm above the head. You might rest the hand on the block or on the floor. If there's any pain in this left shoulder being overhead, bring those palms together instead. We'll be here for a few minutes, so feel free to close the eyes down. Relaxing the face. Just allowing those knees to comfortably bend. If you feel that your hips need a little extra support here, you can always place a block in between the knees. Feel free to take chin mudra with your right hand, connecting index finger and thumb. Positioning the tip of the tongue where the teeth meet the roof of the mouth. Feeling a slight tone in the back of the throat. Begin to observe the dance between the breath and the body. begin to include your breath retention now so as you inhale pause hold the breath for a moment or two and then exhaling very slowly and if it feels okay for you pause again at the bottom of the exhalation before you inhale And taking one last breath here. Gently pressing down through that left palm, slowly bringing yourself up. And we'll simply change sides. So from the left side, lay your left shoulder down onto the mat, right arm above the head if there's no discomfort in the shoulder. Otherwise, once again, bring those palms together. Option two, connect left index finger and thumbs for chin mudra. And as you settle into the pose, try to relax your lower back. Begin to observe the body rising and falling with the breath.
and preparing to come out of the pose now. Pressing down through the right palm, coming all the way up to seated. So our next posture will be coming down onto the navel. Some of you might like to use the wall here as well. Others will be fine just flat on the floor. So I will recruit the two blocks as well. And we're coming into a variation of our Sphinx pose. So I will be using the wall. So I'll just come back a little bit closer. So laying yourself down onto your navel and you want the bolster underneath your belly. So your hip bones will probably be suspended. If you are close to the wall, you can bring your feet up to the wall. Otherwise, just allow them to be flat on the floor. So helpful here to have your blocks underneath your forearms for a little extra support. And you can bring those fingertips to touch, keeping a little space between the palms. So option to stay as you are, keeping the chin parallel to the floor. Though if you find that you need to support the head here, you can always take the hands to the head. Wherever you are, let's close the eyes down. And begin to feel the navel moving against the bolster as you breathe. Be sure to practice your diaphragmic breath here. So navel expanding as you inhale. And drawing in towards the spine as you exhale. Just allowing those shoulders to fall down the spine. Heart shining forward. One more breath here. And then coming out of the pose, you can take your hands to the block or to the bolster, bringing yourself up. Just placing your blocks to the side and turning your bolster so that it's parallel to the long side of your mat. So coming into a prone twist now, Sit with your right hip next to the bolster, knees bending, hands at either side. Inhale to lengthen the spine. And as you exhale, try to bring down as much as your navel to the bolster as you can. So endeavor to bring your belly button down. If this incline is too steep with your bolster, you can always pop a block underneath the end, or if your hips need support, block in between the thighs. So option one, head will turn the same direction as the knees. Option two, head turning the opposite way. So continuing with your diaphragmic breathing here, navel expanding on the inhalation, and gently drawing in towards the spine as you exhale. And I encourage you here to find a longer exhalation. 
So to help set the pace, I'll count your next few breaths. Though if you need to take a breath against my count, please do so. We'll inhale for four, hold for two, exhale for six. Let's all breathe out together. And inhale, one, two, three, four. Holding one, two. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. You might like to continue that count in your mind. Taking one more breath here to your count. As you inhale, next start to press into the palms, coming all the way up. So you can simply come to your knees and change sides or lifting up the hips into a brief downward facing dog. From there, pick up the heels, pivot the feet and coming down on the left side. So left hip next to the bolster, hands either side. Inhale to lengthen the spine and as you exhale, laying yourself down. Once again, head can turn to the right or to the left if there's no discomfort in your neck. Once again, let's look for that longer exhalation. So I'll allow you to count your breath here. You might use the same ratio that we counted before. Or adjusting it if you need to. Just looking for that longer exhalation.
and preparing to come out of the pose now let's press down through the palms once again you might like to just come to your knees or lift up into a downward facing dog feel free to walk out the legs if you're in your downward facing dog And lowering down to the mat. And so our next posture, we'll keep the bolster where it is. A couple of choices here. So again, you might feel you need to prop up the end of your bolster with the block. Otherwise, you might choose to use them to support the knees and hips. Now, option one will be a reclined butterfly pose. So you'll come straight down onto your back, bring the soles of the feet together, and place your blocks underneath your knees and thighs for support. Arms can be by your side, or if it feels okay through your shoulders, you could take the arms above the head, holding opposite elbows with the hands. And if you're feeling tight through the lower back, have space between your hip and the bolsters, or even, as I said before, prop the end of the bolster up so your incline is not so steep. So there is option one, yogis. Option two, if there's no concerns with your knees, we'll come into half hero, half butterfly. So I'll start with right leg in hero, placing the foot next to the hip. You might like to roll the calf muscle out of the way. So it's really important that the top of the foot is facing down and not kicked out to the side. If you know that this is not going to feel good on your knee, then please take recline butterfly pose, option one. So hands coming back next to the hips, left knee is pointing straight up to the ceiling. As you start to recline, push into the top of the right foot, lift the hips and try and tuck the tailbone under. Find your way down to your bolster and then with your left foot, wiggle the foot a little closer to the groin and to the right thigh. Then allow the knee to fall out to the side. So your right leg is in hero, your left leg is in butterfly. Again, arms can be out to the side or above the head. And closing the eyes down if you haven't already. And once again, begin to witness the breath creating space in the body. For those yogis that are in their butterfly pose, option to keep the legs as they are, or if you need to release the hips, you can straighten the legs. Yogis that are in half butterfly, half hero, we're gonna change sides. So bring your palms down next to the hips. Left knee points up to the ceiling, sole of the foot to the floor. Tuck in your chin, 
and come all the way up. Let's release that right leg and change sides. So left foot now coming next to the hip, top of the foot facing down, roll your calf muscle out of the way. Right knee points to the ceiling. As you recline, lift the hips, try and tuck your tailbone under. And then wiggle that right foot a little closer to the thigh and allow the knee to fall open. Finding the most comfortable position for your arms and shoulders. Relaxing the jaw. And checking the position of your tongue. Yogis in butterfly pose or with their knees, with their legs straight, you can bend your knees now. Yogis that are in half hero, half butterfly, same as before, let's bring those hands down. Right knee points to the ceiling, draw your chin in and push yourself up. Let's release that left leg now. Just roll your bolster to the side and come down onto your back. So once you come down, let's take the knees and the hands, just cupping the hands over the knees. Inhale, arms are straight. And as you exhale, simply bend the elbows. Inhaling to straighten the arms. Exhaling to bend. Next time you inhale, lower those feet all the way down to the mat. Let's press into the feet, lift the hips, coming into a bridge pose. And we want to slide the bolster in and underneath your tailbone. So option one, keep those knees bent, or if it feels okay for your back, you can straighten and relax the legs. You might choose to keep the arms by your side, or even float them above the head once again. If there is any strain or discomfort in your back with the legs straight, please bend the knees.
if your arms are overhead, let's float them down. If your legs are straight, bend your knees. Press into the feet, lift up the heels and the hips, and then simply roll your bolster down so that it's behind your knees. So once the bolster is behind the knees, let's bend those knees once again, now placing your feet on the bolster. Straighten your left leg and come into recline pigeon, left ankle to the right knee. Now for some this will be perfect as you are, a little flexion in the spine pressing down through the tailbone, or if you'd like to go a little further you can take a hold of your right leg. You can take the hands behind the knee or on top of the shin. And if you are quite supple through the hips, you could go a little deeper if you take your foot down a little closer to the hip crease instead of being at the top of the knee. If you find that you are straining through the upper back and the neck, you could always place one of your blocks underneath the head. Whichever variation you're in, be sure to gently press down through your tailbone, keeping the jaw relaxed and taking the breath into the outer hip. Let's release both knees down to the bolster once again, changing sides, right leg to straighten. Place the ankle on the knee, option to stay as you are, or raise the left leg, taking a hold of that left leg and adjusting the right foot as you need to.
One last breath into the outer right here. Let's release those legs down now. Coming into Shavasana, just resting those legs over the bolster, tucking your shoulders under. You might even like to lift the hips briefly. Feel free to let those fingers naturally curl or once again connect index finger and thumbs for Chin Mudra. Softening the forehead. Allowing the eyes to roll back. And the tongue is now heavy on the floor of the mouth. And just taking a brief moment to scan over the body. Have you found more space in the body? Is the mind a little quieter? And take this time to just be. Take as long as you need to here, yogis. I hope you enjoyed the practice. Namaste.